oftentimes things that look risky are not as risky as you think, and things that look safe are really not as safe as they first seem. The type of research I do really is focused on how we could use information to help you make better decisions in terms of the type of risks you want to take, in terms of how much return you would get for those risks. Think about the last time you felt nervous about something. Think about what made you feel like you're vulnerable. Um, the type of triggers that cause someone to feel they are uh, experiencing a lot of risk might actually have a lot to do with your environment and the type of things you're paying attention to. As an example, um, when markets are going up uh, and they've gone up for a little while, and we, what we find is a lot of money tend to flow into markets. People feel like, ah, I should have gone into the market last week. People around me are all making money. And so the sense of risk is I'm missing the boat. And so what we observe is consistently when investor sentiment is high, money flows into the market. But what happens subsequently is that actually when money flow into the market, the markets underperform. So, uh, in fact, you think you're missing the boat and what you're doing is stepping into a riskier situation by investing at that time. We see the same thing happen at the bottom of the markets. Uh, uh, things start to go down, things look like they're going south, and all of a sudden money is flowing, what, coming out of the market. Investor sentiment is low. Um, you think the safe thing to do is to get out of the market. Well, it turns out, actually, the safe thing to do is to stay, stay the course. One is to try to understand the value of this company even if there were, there were no markets. So what is the fundamental value of a stock? Think of it as uh, how much sustainable cash flows it could generate over the long run. So try to understand the value. The other is to try to understand why today price might not equal that value. So what are the non-fundamental reasons price pressure could move today's price away from value? Uh, it could be because a lot of people want to sell for a certain reason. And if that's the case, uh, when will they change their minds? Most investors would like to be stock pickers. They would like to be able to find the company, the next Google. Uh, they like to find a Microsoft early on. Uh, but many of them don't pay attention to defense. Uh, so I think of stock picking as like playing offense. It's exciting, it's spectacular when it works, um, but actually defense is a huge part of being a, a good investor. And by defense, I mean don't take the risks that you don't intend to take. Be very deliberate about how you spend your risk budget. So um, a, good, a good example is when you buy a stock like Google, you're not just buying Google, you are also making a decision. For example, you take it out of your bank account to buy Google. The most important decision you've made is moving from cash to stocks. It's not, the secondary decision is that you've actually bought Google. So think in terms of what you are really doing. What you're doing is taking a low volatility, portfolio, low volatility asset and you're converting into a high volatility asset. If you really only like Google, maybe you should buy Google but short out the tech index or the NASDAQ so that what you've done is neutralize the bet you don't want. Um, a lot of professional investors do better because they actually play good defense. They only make the bets that they have the most insights on, and they don't take the risks that they actually have no advantage taking. I tell my students that life is all about how you spend your risk budget. There's a sense in which uh, we will all be taking risks. The question is, are these risks uh, the ones worth taking? And um, is the payoff worth the risk that you've just undertook?